Here I stand with you again, remembering the moments when our friends were by our side in shadow and in sunlight. All the boats have floated by and clouds are spread across the sky and all our friends have gone away and left me with my thoughts today. For when I close my eyes I see the way I know things used to be. The stars among the heavens and the sun upon the sea. My old friend Nahum Heyman wrote this song, Remembering, and it really is so appropriate. It makes it easy for me to recall places, moments and people, which I hope will help me to build up a picture of life here in Israel. Sitting on the sand around the firelight, I hear the sound of bells that ring once more in my imagination. As the flames reach ever higher, songs reflected in the fire echo long into the night and almost till the morning light. For when I close my eyes, I see the way I know. I would like to take you back to a very special period of my life, which I think does give a glimpse of something typically Israel. We would sing. A song at noon, a night we serenade at the moon. The moments never ended, and the years that passed too soon. A long, long time ago, when I was in my teens, I began work as a printer on a daily newspaper, a world which couldn't be further removed from show business. My friends and I were members of the labor youth movement, and there was no doubting our future. We were all fired up to devote the rest of our lives to an exciting social movement for which Israel has become famous, the kibbutz movement, of course. When I close my eyes, I see the way I know things used to be. The stars among the heavens and the sun upon the sea. A song at noon, at night we serenaded the moon. The moments never ended in the years that passed too soon. For me, it meant leaving my job, my family in Tel Aviv, and heading a hundred miles north for kibbutz training in the Jezreel Valley. Now, this was an area which had been opened up by pioneer settlers 30 years earlier, Jewish idealists who came from all over the world to create a new way of community living. when I first walked up this road trying to reach the kibbutz up the road named Geva. I was then fired with idealism and very enthusiastic to know what I was going to do, what kind of a job. Will I be working uh, at the vineyard, which is here on the right, or uh, at the orange grove on the left? or perhaps at the fish farm down the road where we came from. So when uh, I came up, my friends were waiting for me up the road, and uh, I asked, well, comrades, what is it going to be? And they told me, for a starter, let me tell you, it was four weeks in the kitchen washing dishes. How do you like it? I'd never have recognized the place. Where is everybody? Ah. Oh, 
לא את עובדת? לא משתנים, אה? פה אני עובדת במדבר. הללויה, הללויה, מציל אצלי שמה. הללויה, הללויה, מציל אצלי תרועה. כל הגשמה שלום רחלה וזיווה. אוי, יפה, מה שלומך? לעניין הזה כדאי לראות טיפה. אני רק אגיד, אני רוצה להגיד לך שזה הראשון של הראשון קומדיאן, הראשון של הקומדיאן שאני הייתי להיות 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 No, he's <laughs> a very good comedian, and he used to be the funny guy in the Galatron. Fania and Leibush are the veterans of uh, this kibbutz, and actually Leibush was uh, my teacher. I mean, he was the... Yeah, that's what I just said. That's what I just said. He's the one who actually... Uh, taught me everything I know about uh, living with people. And this is Uri Harari, the young man responsible for teaching us how to live and think as one. He was a shepherd and there was nothing he didn't know about raising sheep or young kibbutzniks for that matter. He's a grandfather now, three times over, and the children of Geva love to hear stories of the way life used to be here. Ah, tomorrow, they tell me, is the uh, 62nd anniversary of this kibbutz. Uh, I wonder... Do you want to show me how the kibbutz looks before... Before a long time? Do you have it? Maybe you can tell me. They're going to show me a model that they made, how the kibbutz looked 62 years ago. Go. Oh, he just told me that... Ah, he, he just told me that there was a mayor called Shoshana, who, uh, who the guards the, uh, used to ride, and they were guarding the kibbutz, making sure that... Thieves will not steal anything. There was nothing to steal, by the way. He just told me that they had a donkey who was uh, a guard by himself. He didn't need a guard riding him. And when thieves would come, when thieves would come, the, the donkey would kick them and it would, uh, they would fly over to the next kibbutz. <laughs> no kibbutz was more typical in the way developed than Geva. A group of tents in the middle of nowhere, a fence around and a watchtower for protection, and a band of young people who'd come together, in Geva's case from Russia, to build a new life. They had to break the soil and build from scratch. And believe me, that was tough, because kibbutzim were built in swamps where they had to contend with malaria, or in the deserts where temperatures were up in the hundreds. But eventually came the crops, then the huts replaced tents, and the communal dining room and kitchen were built. Then came the children, and kindergartens, and schools, and everyone pitched in according to his abilities, and received according to his needs. Geva was still somewhat Spartan when I finally escaped from the kitchens and joined the team raising carp in the fish ponds. And look at it now. Just like the 250 or so other kibbutzim, it has flourished. It always comes as a surprise to visitors from abroad. They still expect huts in the wilderness, not bungalows and landscaped parks. The kibbutz movement has come a long way, although nowadays less than 5% of the population of Israel are actually involved with them. Their principles are still the same. Everything is shared, even the decisions about the daily running of the kibbutz. Everyone eats together and works together, 
and no one receives wages. But uh, who needs wages when food, clothing, health care, education, even holidays abroad are paid for by the kibbutz? But the kibbutzim have specialized. One will be known for its plastic factory, another for its dairy produce, and some have gone into tourism in a big way with hotels and guest houses. <laughs> 